Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. The new dungeon is coming with module 26 tomorrow, the Demon Web Pits. In order to unlock the dungeon, you will have to get to 200 points on the new campaign, Demon Web Pits. You can do so by either getting your 100 weekly hauls this week and then again next week, the following Monday. Alternatively, you can go to the Zen store and you can buy a pack to unlock it, yes day one. So we're going to run through the mechanics here of the new dungeon with the perspective of me as a tank and keep in mind this is all from the previous server so they may very well have changed one or two things. As soon as you've just killed those like three groups of ads you're on to the first boss. You have a campfire here you can change your powers so on and so forth. Set up your group. This boss is a six armed Marilith should be a demon. She has a lot of AoE attacks with her slashing swords. Do not be in front of her by all means. Make sure the tank has the threat. Tank just has to absorb all those hits. You can go for an artifact call straight off the bat and you may get this mechanic with all these eyes. They might fix it where only one person get eyes but it's unlikely they'll fix skipping it that easily. Because we called the artifact call, we done enough damage on the main boss that we just completely outdid her illusion spell with all her clones. And now she's going into this stance and putting a laser beam. You can always note which direction the laser beam is going to start. It's towards the left of the door you enter in. So that's west on the mini map. When she's doing that rotation, she is highly resistant to damage so there's no point calling artifacts then no point really using any daily powers or encounter powers even just save them for when she's not immune anymore here we get these meteors falling on the ground you just want to avoid them by moving you will also get these fireballs which will follow you you need to avoid them as well you can destroy the fireballs early or you can just let them deteriorate out just by moving away from them now if those meteors earlier did hit you you get a debuff like you can see blazy has right there she also has this mechanic where she has like a shield and she basically takes no damage but when she moves back to the middle she's going to do the laser again this time you can see always here on the west side of your mini map and you just rotate with it and that's really it for the boss however you have some spicy mechanics where if she does have these clones and then she goes and does the rotation she can end up with like up to four different beams rotating around this is where we have those clones and uh, yeah as a tank you can try threaten them all so that they're all attacking you might make it a bit harder for your damage dealers to damage the pacific one because you have to damage her not her clones and you can denote who she is by the one with the orange swirl if we pause it right here you can see it's this marilith right here she has this orange swirl around her she's the one you need to damage damage her enough and her clones disappear but we get meteors again just simply move out of them again if you get hit by them you get a debuff which means you take increased damage pretty important the tank doesn't receive that or you're gonna, just gonna get slaughtered just a shield mechanic in which just means you can't damage her from the front so yeah tank just sits in the front while the dps hit her in the back behind that shield just means you got a position correctly so let's jump into an example where she goes and does the clone phase. This can happen to you guys just as easily. She does the clone phase. You can see one of them has the red swirl. That's her. This is the one we need to damage. But they all go towards the middle, ignoring aggro, and they all do their laser beam. This can be important then to avoid this and just rotate. You might get caught out if you aren't in the correct position where one of the beams will spawn on top of you and kill you. Just gotta watch out of their positioning and move accordingly and rotate there is one last mechanic when you play as a dps and you get this green line tethered from you to the boss like right there if you're close to the boss you will get flung away if you move away you should be able to like break the line and just not get flung and that's really it for this boss you just kill her and that's it you might get some more of those uh, illusion phases. The more rotation phases, the less damage you have. You kill her. Again, she can drop some Mythic Abyss gear. She can drop some of the new Masterwork reagents. And you'll move on. You go to this group of ads, you kill them. Then you go to the next group. 
then you might want to group up at these stairs before yoloing in and you got to fight a ton of demons aggro one group and they'll all come here so make sure it's tank you aren't using all your threat powers just on them save a bit for the others have some mitigation powers and be ready to yeah tank all those guys in the damage dealers you ideally want to have some daily powers and some massive big aoe control powers and just kill them once you do so a mini boss will appear in the middle and again you'll just kill him you just tank him he hits like a truck and uh, just yeah burn down his hp and then move on you gotta kill the next group of ads right here and then the final group before the second boss and you'll have a campfire just here where you can switch to your single target loadout so you're on to the second boss. This one, you want to have a lot of control powers, as much as you can on your class without losing too much damage. Tank just needs to take the boss here and you just want to chip down a shield he has on him. Now occasionally you will get ad spawning in one of the three spawn circles. I recommend focusing the ad and then going back to the boss. Whittling down the shield once we get it all the way gone, we go then for the artifact call. And here we want to get some big burst damage in before the boss reapplies that temporary hit points. And then it's back to chipping it down and waiting for the next artifact call. Here again, he summons another demon, a Glabrezu, and you want to kill it. If you don't like control him or kill him quick enough, he's going to grab somebody and they'll like get immobilized they'll get incapacitated and won't be able to do anything you can cc these guys if you've got some wizards in your party it can make the fight real nice and easy put entangling force in them use ray of frost and freeze them the boss has this cone attack right there like a frenzy and you just make sure you're not moving the boss too much as the tank and as dps if you're melee make sure you're on the opposite side behind the boss also take note where the dps are you don't want to be much further than that at all because he'll jump to you he'll jump to you do some damage and then try to move back to the tank so you want to stay close you can see he does it there again to avoid that just stay near enough to the boss sometimes it can't be helped when you got ads you don't want to as the tank be running after the ads because then it's hard for the dps to single the ad out and kill them They'll end up taking melee damage from the boss, like this frenzy could kill them when they're trying to just kill an ad nearby. It's infuriating. As the tank, just move the boss away. Once we hit that 50%, the boss disappears and does a Mithilar blast. This is on the tank, it's a tank buster, like in Tower of the Mad Mage. Heavy damage. Now it's vitally important the tank does not die and grabs attention of Orcus in the middle. Yes. You now gotta fight him. He's got that nasty red cone attack, which is gonna target somebody at random. Nothing you can do about it other than avoid it. And as the tank, you wanna stay in one position, don't move too much, and DPS and healer stay on the other side. Because his at will attack, this one, is a massive cleave attack. That if anybody is within like front of him whatsoever, you're you're getting hit by that and you're getting pretty much one shot. Again, that cone attack is really annoying. Now, periodically, every 30 seconds, in fact, the tank takes another tank buster. You saw that just there. I got hit by this big ball. You might want to up your FOV so you can actually see the boss who's floating above the arena so you can see that properly. If the boss is like this, not facing you as a tank, don't worry about it. Don't like adjust your positioning because it'll put off put the DPS and they might move and get hit by his at wills. He sometimes will turn to them, like put a finger of death on them. That's nothing you can do about it or put the cone on them. If he puts the cone on you, try and move out of it. And just remember, every 30 seconds, you're getting another tank buster from the main boss, Grumpf. Here, I'm just setting up for the tank buster. I know it was every 30 seconds. There it is. I can see the big ball. I was a bit early, but we didn't die, luckily. And if you die while tanking Orcus, well, you can't take aggro back from Grumpf, so he'll just go and kill a DPS every 30 seconds until he's killed everybody once, and it's then just going to be on the healer each time. And you can see here when the adds spawn in on their summoning circles, you need to kill them ASAP. Ignore Orcus, try and position 
on the other side of him so you aren't getting hit by his outlet attacks and again going to switch to his dps pov and you can see here when the ads spawn in on their summoning circles you need to kill them asap ignore orcus try and position on the other side of him so you aren't getting hit by his outlet attacks the tank ideally moves him to the outside this tank didn't so I was nearly getting hit by his AoE attacks. But most importantly, what you want to do as a DPS is kill this guy, the cultist. See, I'm ignoring the Hezrao. Once you kill the cultist, the Hezrao disappeared because that cultist will summon another enemy. Additionally, when you get a big fat Baylor spawning in, you need to kill him ASAP. You can see, I think the cultist summoned this one in. Not good. The Baylor will heal everything. They'll heal all the other ads. So again, you need to kill him ASAP. People like to prioritize them based on the Baylor first, then the cultist, I would say, because he summons another demon. Kill the cultist and the demon he summons. And then it's the Succubus because he has a big AoE stun. The Balgora for his damage. The Hezrao for his CC. And then Garistro for his big AoE tax and his charge. And then it's just like the main, then the fire zealot guy, and then like the fireball last. Ideally, don't call artifacts on him. Don't do too much burst damage on him because he will summon adds or Gromp will summon adds based on Orcus's hit points. So when he reaches 50%, he summons another three adds. So if you call artifacts and burst through too much of his hit points, you can end up with a double wave of adds, which can be a bit nasty. So just save your artifacts and do your mount and artifacts on the adds and just help kill them quicker. And then once they're all dead, go back to chipping down Orcus's hit points. So again, as the tank, try move him to the outside, not next to one of the summons. I could have positioned a little bit better here. And just keep in mind again, every 30 seconds while fighting Orcus, you're getting another tank buster. Don't position yourself next to any allies and be prepared. You could use your belt item like the Hawk, the Doohickey or the Dragonfire. Use it the first time you get hit by it. When it's off cooldown, you know you can expect to get hit by another tank buster. And yeah, just then kill Orcus. Of course, focusing on the ads that appear first. And once Orcus is dead, you're back to Grump. He might do tank busters still here. So just watch out. And he has that same shield mechanic. He's going to refresh it after a time of not having a shield. So you want to get as much damage in as possible during the time frame when you've removed the shield. This time he'll periodically spawn more demons. One in each location. Some groups found it best, especially if you have melee damage dealers, that you designate one summoning circle per player. As soon as the ad spawns, you go to your location and you face and counter your enemy. Get combat advantage, that way the enemies are facing outwards. You just saw there we got hit by another tank buster. If you have some melee DPS, when the boss is doing that, move the tank buster away from the boss because that tank buster attack, the big ball, it's AoE. It's going to damage everybody around you. And if you're next to somebody, you're just going to kill them. Finish that already call and then back to killing the adds. Baylor first because he's just going to have, you can see all those lines connecting to like the fireball and the, the, the other main dude here. And he's just going to heal them until he's dead. So kill him and then kill the rest of them. So we got the boss about 20%. We called artifacts here, which was a mistake. Do not do this. And at this point, I realized my mistake and I just tell them not to use their artifacts. We got adds immediately switching off the boss to the adds. We need to stop damage on the boss. Once he gets to 5%, he's going to phase and you need your artifact call for that last 5%. So he's on 10% now. We can afford to do a bit more damage, but we need to kill these adds anyway. But the boss should shield back up again. So we need to wait. We need our artifacts again. 25 seconds still till we get that artifacts. So stopping damage on the boss, we're waiting. He should shield back up. There we go. Now we've just killed a wave of adds. So it would be the best time now to actually phase the boss. But since we don't have enough damage to get through the shield, we might very well get another wave of adds. So the best thing to do here for us is to get the shield really low, then stop damage, then wait for the next wave of adds, kill them, then fully deplete his shield, and then go to the final phase with artifacts. We done the mistake, breaking the shield, 
and then having these ads spawning in with all the dot damage and companions bringing the boss down to about six percent nearly five percent and that's when he phases right here he shield back up goes to the middle of arena everybody takes massive damage over time and now we have these three damn ads sitting there dealing damage i'm trying to grab their attention so they aren't just one shotting dps it was a big mistake not to wait for those ads so again get the boss down to 10 percent let him shield back up chip the shield down to like yeah five percent of the shield then make sure you're waiting for the next ad group kill those ads then get the boss down to five percent with artifact call and then kill the boss all about timing there and you shouldn't have any trouble near the end here i'm gonna skip directly to the last boss you can experience the part between the second boss and the last boss for yourself it's pretty nice however it will be a bit of a trek once you've done it multiple times you're just navigating along pathways killing ads and there's not much trouble there activating a catapult killing more ads and you'll get to here pretty cool place now once you learn the mechanics of this fight it's fairly straightforward a few of them were new here again took us a few tries tank goes in gets aggro of loth and here you want to watch what she does you can see right now she went and done a mechanic with her hands she puts both hands across her chest and creates this rune. This means she puts these red areas on you and you need to move away from where you were. Otherwise it bursts and you take damage and you die. She also has this nasty claw attack, which healer needs to pay attention. If that crits consecutively on the tank, yeah, they could easily die from that. Now, again, you need to watch the mechanics. Right now you can see somebody got hit by a little spider. This spider is gonna jump on your face like this person right here. And it's just gonna make you be able to do nothing until it's gone you can kill this spider as far as i'm aware before it grabs you but yeah after a duration it disappears and you're back to just fighting loth so this is the tank pov here again you saw what she did with her hands she puts them together and then made a rune and then we all have to spread for those red areas again if we keep an eye out on her hands she's now put her left hand glowing this means she's going to put a chain between two players. If we have a look at the players, we can see that there's a web between them. It is currently red until they group together. Once you group together, you stop taking damage over time and the web becomes white. You need to wait until that web expires. And then she has another mechanic. You see right now, her right hand is glowing red. And what you have to do is block that attack. It has to show immune right there. So you can see again, I see the red, I go, I block, and we don't take the hit. That would knock us back and make us CC'd. Here we get the hypo. Since we are not knocked back, we can tank it alone using some defensive powers and our shield. If you do not block the attack, well, you may have to tank the hypo with other players. We group up on the tank and absorb the damage together and try and not die. So as a tank, you really gotta watch out for that. If her right hand is glowing, you're going to have to block that attack or you're going to be knocked to the ground and you're going to die to the hypo. This boss attacks are not AoE, so you don't need to worry about not grouping up on the tank. Just watch out for these spiders that spawn occasionally. So you just need to get the boss down to 50%. Again, there's her right hand. We got the red chain on me this time. We group up and ideally you'll have like a scorpion here and don't have to worry about combat advantage or you just gotta reposition a bit like we do there. Now, if you're taking a ton of damage from this boss, don't be afraid as the tank to just move away from her, especially if you know you're gonna get hypo. You don't want her using her stabby stabby attack right during the hypo because you could strip away your shield and then the hypo could just wreck you if you don't have enough mitigation. So don't be afraid if to just move away a bit from the boss. No need to tank her in one spot if you know you're just going to die anyway. She doesn't have the best speed, so she's not going to keep up with you too well. And as long as you have the threat, she's just going to follow you around the arena. But we get to, yeah, 50% here and she disappears. And at this point, the whole platform is going to tilt and you're going to get pushed up. You want to stand 
about where we were there was a bug and there probably still is a bug if you stand further up of the platform than there you may very well get stuck in the platform here you just want to avoid those red areas don't get knocked over by those rocks and well a dps died now why did he die did you catch that he got hit by this little spider see the little spider it jumped in his face and well he couldn't do anything and he just got slid off the edge that's just yeah i don't know bad timing or just mechanics that probably shouldn't align with each other like that but at this point you're on to the next phase and i'll have to go to a different replay because yeah we wiped there there was no point going forward with only two dps so once the platform levels out again you'll get a big spider spawning here make sure the tank aggro's him you can cc him so that's that if you push him off the edge he'll just spawn back in the middle so there's zero point in doing that just go and kill him you can see they push him off the edge and there he's palm in the middle again so the spider we just go we kill it quick here everybody's taking damage over time as per you see these little black spiders dashing across the screen the more of those you got the more damage over time everybody's taking now what you want to do is kill those little spiders you see what we're doing we're pushing them off the edge they spawn back in the middle and we kill them the reason we're doing this is because they will otherwise heal that godly weapon so there will be three that spawn one either side and one in the back so we wait for them healers healing us there goes the third spider again you can see it puts that beam on the weapon it's healing it so you need to kill them before you can kill the weapon an alternative solution is to kill the spiders when they spawn and otherwise do damage on the weapon it's all dependent on your healer. If you have a warlock healer, you can all group up, sit on his heels and like go and kill the spiders or have them be pushed off and then kill them. Or if you have a paladin healer, you might need to go artifact straight away on the weapon and have one person go to CC the spider that spawns and just kill the weapon quick enough. It's up to you and your group and how you're doing it. Definitely not too favorable for a paladin healer, but definitely doable. I have done it. But you kill the weapon and Loth comes back. At this point, she's going to put a shield on herself. You have one minute to kill this shield before you all die. So yeah, a bit of a DPS check here back to back. Again, this is a previous server. This may change, but for now it's one minute. You will still get like the chains. You can still get the hypo and you have an additional mechanic, which she places a large area on the ground. Just there, you saw it. This web effect is a purple area and you need to be within that area. Otherwise you take damage over time. A bit counterintuitive, but yeah, you need to make sure you're within that area. So if you see it go off, stay in there or you'll take a ton of damage. So we need to kill this shield. I'll show you a clip. We did not break the shield in time and it's just a wipe. That's it. You have one minute to kill the shield or you're all dead. For some teams, this can be a bit rough. Back to back from a DPS check on the godly weapon to a DPS check here on Loth. You break her shield at bursts and you don't die. Here, we did not block that hand attack. And yeah, we got knocked on the ground and I tell my team, leave me be, let me die. I failed to block exactly this, this next hand attack. The hand glows, you can see it right here, and then she knocks me back. I didn't block it, so I got knocked back, flat on the floor, can't do anything, take a ton of damage, and you die. So uh, yeah, make sure you're keeping an eye out for that attack and blocking it. There again, she's put those webs on the ground. You can see them just here. There was a bug where they wouldn't remain there and it may very well still be the case when it goes live. And that's that stabby stabby attack. It's all single target what she does. So you don't need to worry too much about positioning. If you're changed again with a DPS, don't be afraid to just move next to them. It's just this, this does require positioning. You all got to spread apart and then come back after they've burst. Here's that stabby stabby attack and you're just getting the boss hit points down. That's about it. So you just need to get the boss down to 0% hit points and then she will disappear. You aren't done. She will teleport back and this time she'll shield up. Same shield as before at about 50% of her health and you need to burn this down within one minute. Same as before. And then you will be finally finished. Here she will still do her regular attacks. And so if you manage to deplete that shield at the very end, you've managed to beat the dungeon. You've defeated Loth and you'll be able to go and claim your rewards. 
You will get a weapon drop like we do here of the perfect weapons. I made a video covering the math on those and you might get some masterwork materials. Then you can go to your chest. You can get a chance of getting the like abyssal loop rings and also the Marilith mask set artifact neck and waist. So hopefully this helps you guys out to actually beat the dungeon on what to do with the mechanics. There's definitely a few things here and there that your tank really needs to know in order to make it a much smoother run. So good luck and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.